Cheers, Internet. Thanks for tuning into the Steampunk City Festival special on Build Environment TV. Before we get into it, I just wanted to introduce uh, the festival background relatively briefly. Basically, in 2009, there uh, was a very bad fall and winter precipitation season, and the Charles River kind of overflowed and took out anything that was nearby the banks, which happened to include a museum of industry. And shortly thereafter, a group decided to uh, hold a fundraiser to save the museum, so they petitioned the city to allow them to hold a steampunk craft festival they basically took over the entire town. And then a bunch of other local businesses got, got involved in it, including the Watch City Brewery, which owes its name, of course, to the industrial heritage of the town. Every year since then, uh, Rachel, Trent, and I have gone to the festival and kind of hung out with everybody there. We've checked out the crafts and the vendors. We played games. We've, uh, we've sampled some very interesting beers made by Watch City for the fest and generally had a pretty good time. So we kind of wanted to record that this year and put it up. So we hope you enjoy our somewhat abbreviated clip show. Thanks. On the first day of the festival, we decided to wander across the streets of the local farmer's market, of course not really realizing that it wasn't part of the festival, but we ended up talking to some cool people anyway. Uh, it was raining, so we weren't able to bust out the good gear. So we do apologize for the... Uh, so much shoddy audio quality, but it is a, a fun little chat. Because what happened is, I mean, it's, which is delicious, but it wasn't my intention to take right. a bottle of wine at least. Here, try the Pinot. We got a nice scallop shell on sand. And actually, the reason we do it is because uh, Pinot Noir does pair well with scallops. You know, Pinot Noir has that nice light acidity to it. This is a little drier because it's lightly oaked. When you have something that's like buttery and rich like scallops, they make a nice combination because the, the, the wine kind of tones down the scallop, it's not so I would indulgent. That would, that would go well with this, because it's kind of a little kind of a, Yeah. Like on the sides of your cheeks, maybe I think the back it's, of your I think tongue. it's from the oaking. Yeah, well, you know, Pinot Noir has, has very little color, and the oak actually helps a little bit right. with that, and then it, 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 it kind of accentuates the dryness. Which is what I like. Well. I'd like your uh, your opinion on something actually now that sure. I'm talking to I'm assuming you're I'm right? a vintner, yep. Yes, yeah, so I'm talking to an actual vintner and I was reading an article in I think the New York Times or something. Saying that like wine tasting is good to Now, I'm not a huge wine guy, but I, I did some wine. I'm a big beer guy and a spirits guy. And from those worlds, obviously, you can tell the difference between stuff. But this guy in this article is coming out saying that they've done stuff. I mean, I, I've heard of it happening, and um, they take a UV light to change the color, and they essentially are messing with your sensory, and, and you have no idea. Someone tasted a red, and they thought it was a white. Right. Uh, if you wouldn't mind playing along, one thing that I'd like to do is I think I'm good. So I'd like to do a blind taste test, two cups, one's white, one's red, and see if I can figure out if you don't mind indulging me here. My eyes are closed, I have no idea what these are. This is a white wine, this is a red wine. Did I get it right? It did. And that's because you smelled it. I think that was the red. Right. Very good. But you know, it, it gets tricky. Especially when you, when you find out, you know, like, um, th these wines are very different. You know, if we had, if I had like say Chardonnay and this, then it would be challenging because the you're talking about the the weight and the viscosity on right. your taste buds as yeah. opposed to the acidity and then the oakiness. So yeah. That, yeah, that was a little hard, but but it, it was really interesting. Like uh, for instance, when they do Merlot and Pinot, I've seen white Pinots and white Merlots, and at that, it's it's, it's very unique. You know, because you're trying something that isn't meant to be made like that. Right. So it, it, it very often throws people off when they do a blind taste because you don't think something white is going to be Merlot. Right, you know? yeah. But you can do any red grape um, as a white wine if you just minimize the skin contact, which is something that's new that people are trying. <laughs> Everybody's going to try something, you know? Yeah, well, we're doing the same thing in beer. 
black IPA and all that nonsense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I prefer Brewing TV's bullshit hoppy porter. So we didn't do a whole lot outside of the vendors on the first day. On the second day, we did check out some shows. Uh, the first of which was Carnival, which was fairly interesting. I wasn't there for most of it, but Trent did get some interesting footage of it. She's actually never done this before. She's seen me do it enough in our apartment. Because another thing I realized, as you folks will see, there's one, two, three, four heavy duty bottles going down the back here. And then there's this one here. Now, you see, if I was actually doing that in this kilt, well, <laughs> it would become a that show really, really, really fast. <laughs> Just let it happen, it's okay. My goal record is around a minute, folks, so actually if she beats the minute, well, I guess she's not as hard as in the mat. She generally just carries stuff that looks pretty for us. <laughs> It's always bad when I have to do the thing, because honestly, it looks like you're picking the most terrible wedgie ever. It's hard. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. We're at 49. Yes. I'm sure after that trap incident, the lovely lady Gypsy would be happy to apply a little bit of pressure to this. Oh, oh, oh! And now it's hard to tell if it's the glass cracking on my skull. Oh. Oh. As the glass falls from my face, I think I'm still as pretty as before. I look pretty, right? Sure. Sure. But sadly, the after effect of doing such a thing is now I sparkle like one of those Seattle vampires. That ladies and gentlemen represents about 60 pounds of roof and nails and about afternoon's worth of work on my part. That is a genuine bed of nails. They are real. And oh god, they are rusty. And that makes them really rusty. I haven't had a pet shop in about 15 years, folks. Ancient Hindu fakirs used to use the mind-blowing pain from the bed of nails in order to achieve transcendence. I've been doing this act for about two years now, and while I've never seen any such thing, I've never had antibody experience, I've just had trips to the hospital, oh god, it hurts, and screaming. Ah, uh, hello again, sir, my friend who actually packed the nail from before. Ah, uh, if you don't mind me asking, sir, how much do you weigh? <laughs> About 235, okay, you underweight the guy we met yesterday by about 20 pounds, but it's all good. Exactly, I'm safe. So what's going to happen is you're going to put one foot here right up on my chest, the other one's going to go here right on my belly, step on up straight, fabulous pose! Woo! And step forward! And then right after Carnival at the same bar, uh, Dark Follies came up and performed, and they were a really, really fun show to watch. It was kind of like this vaudeville juggling, belly dancing, just crazy physical stuff, and they had this, a really nice rhythm section in the background. Check it out. Thank you. 
after checking out the shows, we decided to complete our day wandering around the park in the beautiful weather, talking to some steampunk citizens about our favorite subjects, beer, wine, and liquor. See what they have to say. I love drinking, eh? Hey, don't drink. What is your favorite steampunk libation to indulge in? <laughs> Mostly an ale, usually. So we're with Martha Mary, quite contrary. And we are a build environment, and we would like to ask you, what is your favorite steampunk libation to indulge in? Mulled cider. So build environment here with two members of Dark Follies and two lovely belly dancers. <laughs> um, now, what is your favorite steampunk libation to indulge in? You know, it's not very original, but I tend to be a red wine drinker, so... <laughs> <laughs> the craft beers are natural. Any um, specific brand? Wherever I am at the time. You yeah. want to go local. <laughs> uh, I like single malt. Any specific brand? Uh, the older the better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, St. Germain and soda. When you indulge, what do you like to indulge in? Depends on the time of day. We usually start with beer about 9.30. Uh, and then it goes on from there. Uh, like a lot of cocktails, like a good old bourbon, old-fashioned. Um, sometimes like to bust out the wine when we're feeling fancy. What about you? Mead. Oh, there's several breweries around here who do oh, fantastic mead. There's gunpowder mead, there's Freya mead. Oh, some of the different brands are amazing. Could you tell me what your favorite steampunk libation might be when you indulge? Um, well... There is a beer that is made down the street by Watch City Brewery, uh, which is a steampunk beer that they make especially for this festival. Is it the steampunk brown? It is, it is the steampunk brown, and I don't recommend drinking absinthe, especially if you like yourself. If you like having a next morning, you shouldn't drink absinthe. I can get behind that. If anyone out there is a brewer or a home brewer, Make a good steampunk cider for me. I'll see what I can do. See you next year. Viking, Viking Squad, Squad, yeah. Is that the one with the hibiscus and the hops? Uh, one of them, yeah. One of them it's has one the hibiscus. Of, one of them. They have three different varieties of Viking's Blood. But uh, we usually get just a base Viking's Blood honey, honey wine. Fantastic. Do you, do you have any in that syringe? No, I do not. <laughs> That's unfortunate. I'd make that sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> Meat is delicious. We would like to know what everybody's favorite steampunk libation is. Steampunk libation? Mine personally, or just the steampunk libation that is everybody's favorite in general? Why not both? Why not both? Well, I, honestly, they're one and the same. I'm a humongous absinthe fan. But it's impossible to get good absinthe in America. Sad Christmas. So there's always mead. Everybody likes a good draw to mead, right? So what wine goes best with a galvanized nail in your nose? Hmm, I would say a nice port. It really goes well with the metallic tang that comes down the nasal passage. Dark and stormy. So I go from sweet to alcoholic faster than the <laughs> my, my particular choice um, is a good brandy. You've got a wide variety of flavors. You can mix them with things. You can mix them with other alcohol and you won't even notice the difference. If you happen to have a delicious ginger brandy with a honey whiskey and a dark rum, it tastes delicious and it just goes down so smooth. That might be the most actual Victorian era answer anyone's ever given. So uh, I'm an alcoholic for all ages. Build Environment TV is here with Steampunk Batman. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite steampunk libation to indulge in? Probably absinthe. I mean, Gatorade. <laughs> you hear it from here, <laughs> Batman drinks absinthe. Hello, Trent Mercy here. I'm Phil. And we are finishing up, wrapping up our steampunk visit. Steampunk City, Waltham, ultimate good times. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks oh, for God. joining us on the steampunk special. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, Internet. And then it's like, why don't I have like a shot glass that just like a tons of gears on it? Oh, oh wait, is this thing still on?